Thank you. Uh, good good morning. Uh, the work I'm presenting is uh, uh, done in Hong Kong Poly by uh, Professor uh, Dai. Uh, he has a very uh, large group working uh, UHPC among other things. And uh, I was there in Hong Kong in February, and he mentioned that he would, you know, we talked up, we prepared the presentation, and he was going to present it. Uh, and he also told uh, that to Professor Consta. But then, at ten days ago, he wrote that no, he won't be able to present, but he will send me the slides. But no slides came, <laughs> so I got, I got panicky. So based on published paper, I. Um, I, I made the slides. The slide did come yesterday, but it was too late for me to use it. So I'm using the slides that I had prepared rather than. So I think you heard about UHPC. Uh, UHPC has many advantages, but it does use a large amount of Portland cement compared to high strength or normal concrete. So there's, now we are getting more aware of sustainability, even UHPC as a subcommittee. So that was one of our objective. Uh, the second objective is UHPC is defined by two things, compressive strength and tensile ductility. And you will notice that the emphasis has been in UHPC community on strength but not as much on ductility. So uh, we want to see, there is on the other hand, if you look at the train hardening cement composite, the emphasis on ductility. So we want to see whether we can get both high strength as UHPC and high ductility. So let me uh, continue with my presentation. We, so we want to reduce the clinker that we know for a variety of reasons clinker content and many ways to do it. One of the way we thought that if we replace cement with geopolymer, so with geopolymer you have a lower CO2 emission obviously, lower energy requirement and compared to resources are lower. Uh, what is geopolymer? I think most of you are familiar with originally geopolymer term was uh, introduced by using alkali activated uh, uh, calcine clay. Uh, now people correct them could be uh, the uh, could be the alkali activated aluminosilicate, but people still use geopolymer. And there are two components: the precursor, which are uh, aluminosilicate, and then you need to have an activation. And depending upon the calcium content, so you have a high calcium alkali activated, and we are using slag for that, and in low calcium alkali, we are using the fly ash. So in our research, we wanted to see UHPC made with a combination of slag and fly ash and varying the low calcium to high calcium content. So if you use just without going to the detail because of the time, if you use low calcium, then the, you primarily get uh, NASH. And if you use high calcium, then you get calcium aluminum or silicate hydrate or, or cash. Uh, so first I'm going to talk about geopolymer made with steel fibers. Currently the most common UHPC uses steel fibers and what we have done is use class F flyers or uh, slag and small amount of silica film. So the, the composition is shown here. And then I also, uh, I think the emphasis I want you to uh, show here is on the, uh, what we did is a uh, different amount of flyers. So, 80% fly ash, 20% slag, and then other way around, 80% slag and 20%. Everything else was, uh, was the same. 
the two kinds of tests were conducted with your compressive strength, which is quite common, and we did uniaxial tensile test. Uh, this is, you know, uh, shown, the specimen is shown there. And the curing is standard for geopoly uh, uh, geopolymer, so you need to have uh, 90 degrees Celsius for three days uh, before and after curing, and it's shown, uh, the curing region is shown there. Uh, so we used, as I said, uh, silica fume, uh, the particle size distribution, or oh, oh, here it's shown. Here, sand is shown here, slag, flash, and the red line is the particle packing theoretical uh, concept that is already used for UHPC, and then what was achieved. So it's very close to theoretical. And I've shown here SEM of sand, uh, SEM of fly ash slag and uh, silica fume. Uh, so here are the results as far as compressive strength is concerned. So if you look at compressive strength, the left hand side shows compressive strength when you vary the amount of class F fly ash or increase the amount of slag. So the highest compressive strength as you can see all of the left was 3% steel fiber. And I didn't pointing out the dimension of steel fibers, but I had mentioned that in one of the slides. Uh, so if you can see that increasing amount of slag or increasing cash, you get higher and higher compressive strength. On the right hand side are produce uh, with, the, with the highest amount of slag, but different amount of fibers, 2%, 3%, 4% steel fiber, and you can see increasing amount of steel fiber, increased compressive strength, and the highest compressive strength was 220 megapascal. The tensile stress strain curve are shown here. One thing you notice is that the tensile strain at the peak is less than 1%, 0.6%. You might also notice that increasing flash concern increases ductility somewhat. So increasing flash, although reduces compressive and tensile strain, it does increase uh, ductility somewhat. And clearly, increasing steel fiber content increases the tensile strength, but also reduces ductility somewhat. Uh, here I've shown the SEM picture uh, with different amount of uh, flash or slag. And when you have the highest amount of slag, then you can see that the material uh, certainly is, is, is more more dense, uh, and I will come back that to later on. We did find that uh, with uh, uh, the, if you look at the ED, uh, the energy dispersion analysis of plain steel fiber or pull-out fiber, and based on calcium silica and alumina silica ratio, we can see that on the fiber surface there was quite a bit of. Uh, combination of cash and Nash, and that means the bond was substantially improved uh, when you have um, the, with, the, with the pullout. The, now, I want to talk about the work that we have done or uh, Professor Dye's group with the high density polyethylene fibers. These fibers uh, have a, a, a modulus of close to 100 uh, gigapascal, quite high modulus, very high tensile strength, and uh, the dimension of the fibers used are shown here, so you can see substantially higher aspect ratio. And the amount of fiber used was 2%. And the idea again here was the, we want to change the ratio uh, in the uh, 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 geopolymer between flash and slag, so you can see that we had 20 to 80, 50, 50, and back to 
80, 20. Uh, all the other uh, activators, oh, I didn't mention the activators were two, uh, uh, water glass and anhydrous sodium silicate. And we want to, and this is when we had submitted to the nano, we had to, wanted to replace the anhydrous partly sodium silicate with nano silica, but that work is not completed, so I'm not presenting it. So, and then there was a retarder from borax, and uh, you can see the water to, I don't know whether you can see it. Here, the water to uh, uh, binder ratio is, I think, close to 0.3. I'm going to present later on with lower water to binder ratio. So, again, here are the compressive strength with the synthetic fibers, 2% but with a different amount of fly ash and just as with the steel fiber, higher the slag content, higher the compressive strength. But you notice the compressive strength is 160 lower than what we had with the steel fibers. Now, very interesting result are the tensile ductility. Very, we can get ductility that is a tensile strain at the peak 10%. In many, many structural applications, I think that the ductility plays a major role. So, somewhat lower compressive strength, but much higher ductility uh, has many, many benefits. Here, there was I, not much significant difference uh, between fly ash to slag ratio as far as tensile stress strain curve. And the peak tensile strength is between 10 and 15 uh, uh, megapascal, which is, which is quite high. So I think the important thing is that now we are approaching more like the strain hardening cement composite uh, and combining the very high compressive strength. And uh, similar to the earlier we have shown here, uh, certainly you can see that uh, uh, with uh, a higher quantity of slag, you have a more uh, denser uh, uh, matrix. Uh, I want to show you here the, the work uh, that was done here with the, let me make sure that I have the right slide. We did earlier with, I said water cement ratio was 0.28 and now 0.27 and we wanted to see whether by lowering the water to cement ratio we can uh, get more closer to the steel fiber. So uh, here I, I've shown here with two different water to cement ratio and you can see that with lower water to plus uh, binder ratio we are close to uh, 180 which is approaching USPC and uh, uh, I, we measured uh, from the, uh, the bound water content uh, and I think that uh, maybe because I see process consta is up. So the capillary porosity, as you can see, reduces when you have a higher slag content. And that's why we have a higher compressive strength. And in fact, for all the work with both the water to cement uh, binder ratio, uh, or precursor ratio, uh, good relation within capillary porosity. Then, uh, with why, what is the diff, why is the, uh, cash gives you much higher, uh, strength? So we did this nano indentation test, classical test. You measure the, make sure that the surface roughness is lower so you can do the nano indentation test. And the results are shown here. Perhaps you can concentrate on the table. And you are familiar with when you do nano indentation, people like density fires, low density, high density, and ultra high density. And you can see that with higher slag content, you have a higher, higher density and ultra high density. And are also the modulus of fly ash and GGBS. And uh, so these are the results of tensile ductility with both uh, the water to different water to, no, this is all with the lower water to cement ratio. And now we are approaching tensile strength of 18 megapascal and a ductility of 10 megapascal. And uh, what I want here to show you 
is the comparison uh, of the of the properties of tensile strength. But look at the bottom plan. Uh, the, the the key thing is that during this high strain hardening crack width, it's a m sequential multiple cracking. So look at how crack widths are. We are talking about the crack width of 100 micron at the tensile strain of 10%. So that is the key. And you can see some pictures uh, with like, for example, here with 9%. So you have a sequential multiple cracking and the crack width. So that is the direction. So we have now uh, geopolymer, which is uh, more sustainable, and with the synthetic fiber, you can get uh, with high strength and uh, ductility. So if you compare, this is the last slide. Uh, we are talking about compressive strength versus tensile strength. And to the extreme left, all the world, they are steel fiber. The other are with the synthetic fiber, and our work is shown here in this study. So we do not have as high a compressive strength, but it's still close to uh, 180, but very hard tensile So, and I think that this is very, very uh, interesting for many structural applications.